Hey guys, welcome to Tech with Geeks channel. This is Naveen here. In today's video, we are going to talk about MongoDB. It will be more of a introductory session uh, where we will be talking about the use cases of MongoDB or we'll basically try to understand what is MongoDB firstly. And I would say this is a part one, uh, which means you can expect a series of video on this topic. We'll be covering mostly on the administration part, like setup, installation, uh, backup and recovery, user management, uh, like how do you audit, profiling, uh, all those things, whatever topics you can think of. We'll also cover replication and sharding also. So we'll go through one by one. Okay. So for today, it's going to be just an introduction. So let's get started. Firstly, what is MongoDB, right? MongoDB is, uh, I would say, a leading NoSQL database. It is also like a document-oriented database. So you might be thinking, like, what is NoSQL database or what is document-oriented? So for uh, this, these terms might be new for people who work only in. Uh, RDBMS database, like which is relational database, you can think of SQL Server or Oracle or Postgres, MySQL, etc. So let's try to break down these terms and understand like what they mean. So first we have to understand like what is NoSQL and then we'll talk about document oriented and all those things. So before uh, talking about like or understanding what is NoSQL, First, we have to understand what challenges we have with RDBMS. RDBMS is like relational database management systems where data is stored in a specific format like tables and uh, which has rows and columns. Okay, so you can think of RDBMS how like this is how the normal traditional database uh, relational database stores the data so you will have a table and you will have a column names defined here so it can be c1 like that so you will be having column names defined here and it will be in columns and rows format <coughs> so what happens with uh, rdbms is like let's say it is a uh, perfectly suited for certain applications but things get like a bit difficult when you started to see huge volume of data okay when you are dealing with like uh, uh, 100 tb or 500 tbs of data then things might be difficult with relational databases i'm not saying it cannot handle it would support but it is not in an efficient way okay so that is the very first thing like huge volume of data so i can say that is one thing volume we can say i'll just say volume here and that is one okay that is one challenge so even though if you uh, have a huge volume you could definitely like uh, scale up your servers but scaling up also in rdbms world you can go up to certain extent only again like uh, managing those things is difficult okay it's not so easy to scale up your servers. So either you can, uh, RDBMS can scale up horizontally and vertically. Okay. So when we say, uh, scaling up horizontally and vertically is nothing but let's say you have a, uh, server. Okay. Which is with, for example, five, 512 GB RAM. And uh, if you want to scale it vertically from this existing box yes you could increase your configuration it could be ram or it can be storage anything so you can increase it okay this is what we say as vertical scaling and if you want to go for horizontal scaling yes you can have another machine connected to this setup like that you can go on but there will be certain limit beyond which you cannot go okay be it any rdbms database there should be some sort of limit and it is not easy also to do this scaling 
so in no sequel world this is something this problem is something easily uh, solvable okay you can easily scale up your machines which means it can handle huge volume of data and it is easy for scaling up so two things we have seen one scalability is difficult with rdbms whereas on the no sequel world it is easy to scale up and volume when you deal with huge volume of data that is another uh, difficulty you have with rdbms the next thing is uh, the variety of data so this is another v we can say another v variety of data okay so let's say you have a table with this fixed format like column 1 2 3 and 4 and after an year okay you have a requirement okay i need to add another column to my table okay so it is possible okay you have to, but the amount of effort which you have to do and uh, code changes that and all will be huge and when we talk about variety right so your data can be of different format so it's not like every time you will go and do this modifications whenever there is a data change so with no sequel so in rdbms we call this as a fixed schema right so in NoSQL, you don't have any schema, which means I can have a uh, data which is going to have with, let's say, few set of three uh, columns. Then I can have another data with four, four set of columns. So in NoSQL world, it can easily adapt to different data varieties. Whereas in RDBMS, it is very, very challenging to cope up with that okay then comes the speed at which we are getting the data okay so nowadays if you see like we are dealing with huge volume of data so volume is another thing and velocity they call so you would have heard of like people saying three v's or five v's and i think now it is more than that also but these are the three main v's three v's they call which uh, the big data world is usually like solving these problems volume velocity and uh, variety okay so when we talk about uh, velocity right the speed so you can have like huge amount of data generated within like fraction of uh, minutes or seconds as well so in those kind of situation let's say you have a uh, application which is going to which is monitoring like a bunch of servers and loading all the logs in a dedicated place. And each system has its own format of sending the logs. So in that case, you cannot store those logs in a relational database because each system has its own way of formatting. So few systems will have like few fields like uh, date or event time, then you, it will have its own categories. So in those cases, RDBMS might not be a perfect fit and NoSQL will solve those problems. It can, it can handle huge uh, number of transactions quickly and variety also, another thing. So we see these are the different challenges with RDBMS and these challenges are going to be solved with our NoSQL database. Okay. So let's move on further. Now, what is NoSQL database? As the name says, NoSQL is not only SQL or you can think of a non anything which is non-relational databases, you can term it as a NoSQL database. Because if you look all the traditional RDBMS databases, they use SQL query language to access their data. Okay, so in case of NoSQL, they have their own uh, languages using which you could access the database. So you can think of like anything which is non-relational as a NoSQL database. And these are specially used for storing large quantities of complex data. And you can have a variety of data as well. So that is the 
call that is a simpler definition of NoSQL database okay so let's move on further so if you remember we talked about like MongoDB as a NoSQL document oriented database so in NoSQL world you have different again like NoSQL under NoSQL you have different types of NoSQL databases okay so key value stores document database column oriented database graph databases so these are different uh, types of NoSQL databases which you can think of okay so key value is you can think of something simpler so like uh, if I have to give you some examples like Redis and DynamoDB they are key value stores so all you will have is uh, you will have a key so you can say you will have a key here and that key will be mapped to a specific value okay sorry about my drawing so you will have a key and that will be mapped to a specific value so it's as simple as it this is one of the very basic type of NoSQL database okay the second one is document database here also like you would be having a key value pair but everything will be stored as a document so in MongoDB we will be writing our I mean the data will be retrieved in JSON format so and internally it is going to store it in a JSON, JSON format binary JSON format okay so that is something which we will be talking more about this document uh, oriented things in coming videos and the third one is column oriented where all the data will be like in stored in column basis okay this will be mostly used for uh, you can think of where you have to do analytical workload kind of which will be like doing a sum or aggregation or those kind of things data warehousing scenario you can think of like where uh, the column level data will be pulled and you will be doing some sort of analytics there then the last one is graph database which is kind of a like where you could draw a relation between each component where you will have nodes edges and properties those kind of things and if I have to give you an example for I think for key value I told you it is Redis and DynamoDB for document database we have MongoDB which is very famous and you also have uh, CouchDB then for column oriented we have Cassandra and HBase then for graph we have a Neo4j database and many more are there these are some some of the famous ones okay now uh, we have to understand few more terminologies when we uh, have to work with MongoDB when let's say you are coming from a RDBMS background there are few things which you have to know okay so let's say you have a table in RDBMS okay and uh, let's say we have a table with for example three columns okay let's close that and let's say you have a column with ID and name I'll just put in and other one you can say age maybe for example now if I have to translate this to a MongoDB structure like how the data is would be stored in a JSON format uh, let's say like I'll have some entry for example one and we will say name as Jack for example I'll just put the first letter it's just for our understanding and age is 22 okay this is the normal table which we have in uh, SQL or relational world okay my writing is bad forget about it it's just a table okay now in terms of MongoDB okay we have something called collection so your table is 
collections in MongoDB. Okay, database is same as database. You will call a database as a database only in MongoDB. Then tables are termed as collections. And how a collection would be represented is like for example, if I have to represent this, I can do something like this. I have a sample code which I can quickly show you. Uh, let me change this ID so that it will be easy. So this is how the data would be stored in MongoDB. So table is referred as a collection here and the column name, right? Whatever you have here. So this will be named as a field and this is the value we call it. Okay. So that is one thing. and. So this is how the mapping would be like database is same as database in NoSQL world. Then table is collection and your column name is a field here and a value. So that is how in MongoDB the data would be stored. So like this is just a very simple example how a SQL table will look like in a MongoDB uh, document. So you can think of this as a single document okay this is like a thing this is one document a collection will be having a multiple set of documents in it and if you remember I told you like MongoDB or in NoSQL it is basically schemaless okay you can think of like let's say if I have to if I want to have another document here I can have something similar let's say uh, we'll say Paul and we will give him uh, some other ID and AH. I can have something called city here and I can name something. Okay, so I can say India. The, in RDBMS, you cannot do something like this. Okay, you cannot have a multiple or this is basically we are having an entirely a different schema right so I cannot do this same thing adding an extra field here in RDBMS I have to have a separate column created for that and add it another example which I can give you is, or a real time use case you can think of is let's say the KYC thing which we do in India right uh, if you go for any bank or anything the KYC part you can think like you can think like how you can design a system because KYC can have can be done with multiple government documents. It can be done with Aadhaar or it can be done with passport or your voter ID or your driving license. So all these data are in a different format, right? So it's not in the same format. In case of if you are going to use RDBMS for this system, then you cannot come up with a uh, easy design right because your Aadhaar will be having details in a different format or your driving license will be having the data in a different format so if I have to go for a uh, MongoDB so in that case it, it can be easily uh, adapted so you can have different schemas uh, put together in the fly you don't have to define anything in the beginning itself so this is one of the big advantage which you have with MongoDB okay so now I hope like you would have got a bit of understanding like how the data is in MongoDB and why NoSQL is coming into picture okay and I hope like this gave you some brief information on that and that's it for this session in upcoming videos we'll be uh, talking more on We'll, we'll do the installation, how to do the setup, how you can practice it in your own machine. You can do a lab setup and we'll see how to do the installation and we'll play around it. Okay. So that's it guys. So please put your feedback in the comment section and uh, we are always open for feedbacks and that's it. Thank you.